Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to the uh, our annual meeting of actually Comsoc ISAC ETI. So we just uh, wait for another one to two minutes and we'll start. Okay, seems that uh, we now have uh, nearly 40 people. Okay, so I'll, I'll start uh, our meeting. So I guess everyone can hear me, right? Can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Hi, Athena. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Yunina. Hi, good to see everyone. Yeah, yeah, good to see you guys. Okay, so I'll start since we are already uh, uh, two past nine. Okay, so this will be today's uh, agenda. So uh, first uh, have a uh, welcome and then Charles summary for our uh, th uh, this year, 2021 and the road ahead for 2022, and uh, uh, we'll discuss uh, one motion and then some Q&A, okay. So first of all, welcome to the uh, 2021 IEEE Comsoc ISAC ETI uh, second meeting. So during the meeting, audiences will be muted, and please do not annotate on your screen with, uh, because everyone can see it. And please kindly enter your name, email, and affiliation in the chat box for use of uh, sign in. Okay, so I'm Fan Liu, I'm the academic chair of HBA Comsoc ISAC ETI from Southern University of Science and Technology. Okay, I, I will first uh, give some uh, uh, statistics of the last year, uh, of this year. So, um, so this first of all, this is a publication stats, and uh, we have these uh, numbers of ISAC publications from 90, uh, 1963 to uh, to now. Okay, so we so as we can uh, so to the best of our knowledge, the first paper on ISAC was published in 1963, and as you can see, it is now uh, tremendously increased. And uh, so for this year, we have. Uh, nearly 300 publications. And these are two lines. One is with wireless sensing, because wireless sensing are mostly, um, uh, so uh, is, is mostly a topic from the uh, computer science uh, community. And uh, for, uh, for us Comsoc and uh, SPS pay, uh, people, we are uh, focusing on the uh, 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 signal processing communication. So this is another line without wireless sensing. So you can see that uh, uh, at this year, we have more than 200 publications without wireless sensing. And with wireless sensing, there are 300 of them. And uh, so during this year, we have all also uh, organized several special issues and uh, conferences, workshops, and uh, special sessions. So we believe that uh, the next row, there will be more of the, uh, uh, the publications on ISAC. So as we can see that now, the most well-recognized topics in ISAC will be, uh, we all know we from design, from the uh, signal processing community, wireless sensing from the CS and the vehicular ISAC, okay. And some other very uh, interesting topics, fundamental limitations and trade-offs, network architecture, terahertz ISAC, and some emerging topics, hardware and transceiver design, and security and privacy. Okay, so this data was collected from the actually Explore in this uh, month. Okay, so here are some statistics of the uh, government uh, government funded projects from the China. So most Ministry of Science and Technology, and the National Science uh, Foundation of China and SFC and Finland, so uh, Academy of Finland, so 
uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, uh, so our our uh, colleague uh, Professor Tanali Rihonen has recently uh, uh, granted a very big projects on ISAC. And uh, also some other projects from the EU are Horizon, uh, mostly funded by Horizon 2020. And from the USC, we have NSF, we have DARPA, and in the UK, we have EPSRC. So uh, overall, there are mi millions of uh, opportunities in ISAC that was funded by governments worldwide and not to mention the uh, uh, companies' uh, projects. So there are also lots of them. So here are some stats of our membership. So our community is becoming large and worldwide. So our members from the, uh, uh, so we, ask, we, we established uh, the ISAC ETI uh, this uh, May of this year. So with 60 founding members, and now we have more than 800 of them. And now, uh, so, so at the beginning, we have 16 attribute fellows. Now we have uh, 32 of them. So we have created several social media on WeChat. So WeChat members from zero to uh, 1,400. And WeChat account, WeChat account followers, now we have uh, nearly 3,000 of them. And of course, we have YouTube and Bilibili uh, social media followers. And there are nearly 700 of them. So now we are the uh, largest uh, Comsoc uh, Emerging Technology Initiative. And uh, perhaps the... Uh, largest uh, academic organization dedicated to ISAC technology worldwide. And we would like to mention that uh, one of us uh, it has been newly promoted to ITRA fellow. So congratulations to Professor Bruno Clerks from Imperial College London. So uh, he, he will be, uh, be become an ITRA fellow from the, uh, January the 1st of the next year. And we have nominated three Ashway Comsoc distinguished lecturers, uh, Professor Christos Masoros, Professor Stephen Abazi, Professor Andrew Zhang. So the final results uh, will be determined by the uh, Comsoc. So we have uh, already nominated uh, uh, three of them, but uh, the results are yet to come. And uh, we have nominated the four symposium track chairs for ICC uh, 23. So uh, 2023. And uh, among them, Professor An Liu from Zhejiang University was finally chosen as a track chair for the uh, uh, select, selected areas in communication ISAC track. So from ICC 23, we'll have our own track, regular track. Okay. Okay, so uh, so the previous slides are some uh, overall stats about uh, our ETI and about uh, the whole area. So now let's focus on what we have done uh, in the past of the year. So so as we um, as we all know, we have six working groups. So publication group WG one conference and events group WG two. Education group, WG3, online contents group, WG4, and the diamonds and data science group, and industrial activity group. Okay, so we have six working groups. And here is the uh, here is a summary of the first group, so WG1 publications, which uh, is led by uh, Professor Athena Patrupulu and Professor Jan Zhu Zhang. And uh, so, at the beginning of the uh, establishment of this ISAC ETI, we have promised in the first uh, in, in the working group one that uh, we will organize several special issues in top tier journals, and we will um, establish an ISAC newsletter. Okay, so now what we have realized is that uh, we have uh, established this ISAC newsletter, which is known as ISAC Focus, and we have five special issues ongoing and more proposals submitted, okay. So here is the uh, ISAC focus. So ISAC uh, EGI newsletter, well, the uh, editor-in-chief is Professor Andrew John from UTS, uh, who is also the uh, 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 leader of the work, working group one. And uh, we have established the ed editorial team with edit EIC, EIC assistant, Editor for video interviews, so we have Professor Nuria 
uh, Pre 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 from North Carolina State University, and Professor Jonathan Matten from University of Melbourne as editors of uh, video interview. And we have several editors for technical articles, uh, Dr. Le Zheng, Dr. Xin Pingyi, uh, Dr. Pat Manava Sen, and Dr. Zhong Xiaowei, and uh, Professor Shash Kent Patio, and uh, Dr. Uh, Men Yared is um, uh, from the University of Zimbabwe, Asia University. And uh, editors for uh, industry activities and standardization progress. Uh, so we have two editors from the industry, and we have uh, Yuan Hao as editor for ISAC events and others. So this is the first issue, the inaugural issue, ISAC for vehicular networks. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, front. And uh, for the first issue, we have several technical contributors, uh, Professor Kai Wu, Professor Andrew Zhang, Henk, Nuria Yunchen, me, uh, Annam Ali, and Vijay, and uh, uh, Spaha Sadam Ram. Okay, so, um, so the first issue was published uh, this September, and we also have a video interview with Professor Chris Masoros, which was hosted by Nuria, and we have some industry activity introduction on HVE AO, AO2.11 uh, BF by uh, Perry Wong. And our upcoming issue will be soon released this month, so December uh, 2021, with, with, with the topic, ISAC for Wi-Fi networks. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is the first uh, uh, ISAC focus uh, newsletter. And we also have several special issues. So this is uh, uh, the first special issue on actually GSTSP. So on joint communication and radar sensing for emerging applications. And uh, this special issue has already um, published uh, last month, so November. And uh, so as we know that um, we have received uh, uh, 57 paper submissions and uh, so most of them are from the region 10, so Asia Pacific, and we have accepted 15 of them. So with an acceptance rate of uh, 26%, but it is worth mentioning that the accepted papers co-authored by our ISAC ETI members is 11. Okay, so number of accepted papers by our members is 11 over among all the 15 uh, some, uh, accepted papers. And uh, here's another ongoing GSX special issue. So actually general selected areas in communications, which is also the uh, top tier journals in the actually consult. And I'm leading this uh, special issue with uh, six brilliant colleagues. We're handling this uh, submissions uh, together. So we have received uh, 90 submissions, so a lot of them. And uh, again, most of them are, are from the Region 10, Asia Pacific. And we have uh, give 32 major revision decisions. And uh, it is, again, worth mentioning that nearly half of the uh, submissions are from our ISAC ETI. And uh, more importantly, there are 23 of the, of, of the major revi revision papers uh, co-authored by our ISAC ETI members, so 23 for among 32 major revision papers. So uh, this is to see that uh, uh, all the major players in the ISAC area are all in our ETI now. Okay. So this is for the uh, GSX special issue. And uh, uh, we also have some uh, ongoing special issues. Uh, we have IET signal processing, advanced uh, signal processing for integration of radar and communication. Uh, which has received 12 submissions and is currently under review. And uh, we have two recently approved special issue as for the Open Journal in Communications Society, Integrated Sense and Communications for Multifunction Networks in 60 Era, and actually Transactions on Green Communication Networks, so TGCN, so Integrated Sensing for Other Communications for Future Green Networks. Okay, so these two special issues, one is led by Yuan Hao and one is led by Wei Jie. Okay, and we have uh, one proposal submitted, which is uh, submitted to actually Wireless Communication Magazine, and which is currently 
under review by the uh, EIC. And it is also uh, worth mentioning that so we have uh, so the ISO so we have uh, uh, recently upcoming ISAC book so uh, with which which is edited by uh, Vijay Kumar Vijay Mishra and Bhavani and Buyon and Lee. Okay, so this book uh, will be published uh, uh, next uh, uh, September, so September twenty twenty two. And uh, this book is an uh, edited book with lots of chapters. And uh, so these chapters are contributed by 40, 40 leading researchers from the ISAC ETI. And uh, we are also planning another book. So I will uh, mention the details later. OK, so this is for WG1 and for WG2 conference and events. So uh, we have two leaders, which is Masoros and Wei Jieyuan. And uh, our promise at the beginning is that we will organize lots of special tracks, workshops, special sessions, and we'll uh, have conferences, liaisons, and uh, uh, more importantly, we, have, we, we are thinking about to have a dedicated conference on ISAC. So now we have one dedicated conference, which is Joint Communication Sensing Symposium, and two regular sessions, uh, six uh, workshops, seven special sessions and 11 tutorials and this all happened in 2021. So some some of the highlights here is that um, we are officially releasing a uh, workshop series. So within the ComSoc we have, uh, so we'll continue organizing workshop in GlobalCom, in ICC and WCNC every year. And the first, uh, uh, so the first workshop in this series is GlobalCom 2020. So workshop on ISAC. And the second one is on WCNC 2021. And the third one will be WCNC 2022. The fourth one will be ICC 2022, okay? And uh, so this is the uh, first workshop series and it's an official workshop series uh, organized by ISAC ETI. And these are our websites. So you can visit this website for more information. So there will be ISAC SEC, so uh, selected areas communication in communications track since uh, 2023 ICC, as I just uh, introduced. So Professor An Liu will be the SEC track, uh, SEC track, track chair. And uh, so the workshop series will no longer be in conjunction with uh, Global Common ICC from 2023 if this uh, SEC track is available. So this SEC track is not uh, by default because we will need to apply for um, for, for the SEC track every year from uh, to the from the uh, Comsoc, and um, in order to reach out to the uh, broader community to attract people from the, for example, computer science community, we are also considering another workshop series which might be organized uh, with uh, in conjunction with Infocom, Mobilecom. Okay, so. These are all uh, computer science community uh, conferences, major conferences. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, another dedicated uh, GSNS. So this is a dedicated conference, GSNS Symposium, and uh, the first uh, actually international online symposium, GSNS, was led by uh, Professor Gehardt. So this was happened uh, at this February, okay? And uh, at that time, our ISAC ETI has not established, but uh, for the next year, so we'll have the second actually international hybrid symposium on JCNS. So this will happen at uh, on March of the next year. Um, and uh, so I, I'm the TPC co-chair of the uh, organization committee. And again, this was, uh, this will be led by uh, the general coach, uh, Professor uh, Gerhard Fertus. So we also have received uh, lots of submissions from the uh, um, from the ISAC ETI. Okay, so here is the uh, overall um, statistics of the uh, conferences and events we have organized uh, uh, during this year. So we have, like I said, uh, so dedicated conference, JSNS, and uh, two regular sessions, one is in the radar conference. So uh, in this 2021, there's a regular session on spectrum sharing uh, between communication and radar, uh, chaired by Professor Daniel Bliss and uh, 
Professor Vanessa Hassani. And as I said, from 2023, the SEC will, will have uh, uh, selected areas in communications track on integrated sense and communication. This will be chaired by Professor Anne Liu. And we have organized seven workshops in COMSOC uh, conferences. And uh, lots of special sessions, of course, in the, uh, um, uh, in the signal processing uh, co communities and radar communities, okay? And uh, 11 tutorials, keynotes and panels, and some of them are given by me, and uh, more of them are given, uh, have been given by our brilliant colleagues, like Professor Andrew Jump, uh, Vijay, Bhavani, uh, Gerhard, Henk, and uh, Nuria, uh, and Andrew Conti, Conti and uh, of course, uh, so Dr. Winton and Peinju from Huawei, and, and Professor Joseph Kerr and Professor Wei Yu. So uh, lots of tutorials and the keynotes and the panels uh, happened during the last year. Okay, so the third working group on education. So this working group uh, is now led by Professor Jie Xu from CUHK Shenzhen and Professor Mao Chapi. So uh, Mao is now with the uh, NYU Abu Dhabi. So it is, uh, sh she's no longer with NC, okay? And uh, so at the beginning, we have the promise that we will organize um, actually ComSoc ISAC ETI webinar series, uh, summer and winter schools and online courses and tutorials. So we all know that uh, for now, we have finished the first season of actually ComSoc SPS ISAC webinar series. So this is a joint event um, between the ComSoc and the SPS. And we have co-sponsored the One Word Signal Processing Seminar Series from the uh, summer to fall, okay? And uh, we have delivered 11 tutorials and keynotes and panels, like I said here. And another news is that uh, the ISAC Summer School is now in, prep uh, in preparation. So here, is the, some, uh, here are some highlights. So uh, this is the uh, first season of actually comes of SPS. ISAC webinar series, and we have fortunately uh, uh, invited five uh, brilliant leaders in the area, both from the uh, industry and academia. So here are some stats. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 130 Zoom audiences. So nearly every, um, every seminar will have more than 250 uh, audiences in, the, in, in our Zoom meeting. And uh, we have uh, nearly, uh, we have nearly, uh, let's see, um, 100,000 uh, people on live broadcasting. So at our, in our social media, like in YouTube, Bilibili and Juhu. And uh, so now our, we have our second season back. So this season we will have, uh, um, uh, well, our webinar will be uh, organized in a new form. So we'll have a monthly two-in-one seminar. And we, are, we have all already organized the first one, which was given by uh, Professor Jandrew Zhang, and Professor Yimin Daniel Zhang. And this uh, webinar series has been officially announced uh, by the actually SPS, okay? And our next seminar will be uh, given by Professor Wei Yu and uh, Professor Christos Masoros uh, in the next month. We have also uh, co-sponsored the One World Signal Processing OWSP seminars, which was uh, originally established by the uh, professor, uh, Professor Wenken Ma from the CUHK. And uh, we have sponsored uh, the summer, uh, summer uh, webinar series. So these are uh, joint seminars with our ISAC seminars. So we have uh, Yonina, Athena, and Gerhard as the three speakers. And uh, in, the, in this four, so there are 12, uh, sorry, there's uh, 14 speakers and we have also co-sponsored all the seminars. And uh, within the uh, OWSP organization committee, we have uh, Professor Chrisus Masors and Professor Cao Hui Chang as the organizers. And so they are both uh, leaders in our ISAC ETI. Okay, so the fourth uh, working group is the online contents, which is led by Yuan Hao. And uh, so at the beginning, we have the promise that we will um, complete the ISAC ETI website. 
and we will uh, establish the uh, ISAC Research Library and on GitHub and the best readings, Comstock best readings and some social media. So now, so after uh, several months, we have our ISAC ETI website almost completed, thanks to Yuan Hao. And uh, we have, uh, now we have an ISAC research library on GitHub. And we have actually Comstock best readings on ISAC submitted, uh, which is now under review. So we now have uh, um, lots of followers and fans on our social media. So there are thousands of them. And of course, uh, the uh, WG4 will provide technical support to the, uh, our newsletter, ISAC Focus. So here are some highlights. So ISAC Research Library on GitHub. Uh, so we hope that this can provide a reference for our new researchers. So, uh, so you can see there are lots of them and within different uh, categories. Uh, so a list of more than, more than 600 papers on ISAC actually. So there are uh, 96 stars we have received and 23 folks. Uh, 1,300 uh, 1, views per week and uh, uh, 12K views in total. So now we are the uh, top one in the MATLAB, uh, so GitHub uh, category in MATLAB weekly trending. So for almost one month now. Okay, so we hope, uh, so you, you can view this on the, uh, on the research library on the GitHub. We have submitted uh, the uh, HV comes of best readings on ISAC. So we also uh, included like uh, 70 papers and, uh, and special issues uh, in the, uh, or, or let's see, atoms in this best reading list. And there are 15 uh, categories and 750 words. So here are the uh, contributors, so which is led by me and uh, uh, my colleagues, so our uh, researchers from the ISAC ETI. And this is for the uh, websites. So now we have three websites available. First of all is the uh, our uh, official website, actually Comsoc ISAC ETI website, uh, under the uh, domain of comsoc.org. Uh, and uh, we have two other uh, dedicated uh, websites. One is on the um, a webinar series. So this is uh, www.iwe.isac.org. Uh, and another one is ISAC workshop series website. And this is, uh, and this is uh, on the construction. And we hope to include our second workshop series very soon on, uh, from the uh, Infocom and Mobilecom. And we were trying to uh, reach out to the uh, CS people. Okay. Uh, finally, here's, uh, sorry, this is not the final one. So the WG5 demos and data sites. So uh, we're currently preparing some, um, uh, we're considering some demo uh, events. But now I, I just want to mention that uh, we have lots of colleagues, we have lots of ISAC ETI members working on ISAC demos, including Yonina, Robert, Tanali, Bahavani, and uh, some, some colleagues from China. So we, I have some uh, examples here. So this is the uh, passive sensing platform at uh, uh, my university, SASTEC, so which uh, is led by Professor Ri Wang. So this is to use the uh, base station signal as a passive reader to do uh, you know, human motion sensing. And uh, here's another uh, very interesting demo from Tanali. So now he's working on using 5G NR sensing platform. So this is a, a 3.5 gigahertz platform with millimeter wave mixers. And uh, so the aim is to exploit standard compliant 5G NR waveform with 400 megahertz channel bandwidth. Okay. So these are some of the results. And another very interesting uh, uh, demo is Wi Fi sensing platform. So Wi Tratch. Uh, at uh, Peking University, uh, led by Professor Da Qing Zhang. So this is to exploit the Wi-Fi signals for human motion tra trajectory tracking. And uh, I would like to highlight another very interesting ISAC demo, so uh, led by Professor uh, Qi Xunzhang and Zhi Yongfeng, uh, and from Beijing University of uh, Post and Telecommunications. 
So it is worth mentioning that uh, so the associate the relevant paper of this demo has been has been uh, has, has a front uh, cover uh, of the IEEE GSTSP, GSTSP SI. So the special issue led by uh, Christos uh, on joint communication and radar sensing for emerging applications. And this is to use the uh, 5G NR waveform to do uh, vehicle sensing and communication. So to exploit the NR frame structure for time division ISAC transmission in VTRX networks, so they have two uh, face every millimeter wave antennas and uh, one uh, autonomous vehicle demo and two millimeter wave transceiver nodes. So they can achieve a sensing performance uh, on the 0.2 meter and the communication performance of a system throughput uh, at uh, 2.2 gigabit uh, per second. So if we can look at this demo, and this is just a very short demo, as you can see, this uh, autonomous vehicle is, uh, is both the communication receiver and the target and uh, the transmitter is doing sensing. So this is sense results, and this is a communication throughput, the constellation results. Okay, so these are some interesting demos uh, organized by uh, our members. Oh, sorry. Okay, so finally, finally this is a sixth working group on industry activities, okay? And uh, as we can see that uh, during the uh, past year, so many companies, scientific research in institution and uh, operator com com companies have generated a lot of reports on ISAC. So there are lots of uh, conferences and symposium uh, related to 6G ISAC held in China over three times and uh, I have atten uh, attended, uh, I think two of them. And there are more than six white papers um, published by major companies like uh, uh, Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia, ZTE, China Mobile, and other companies. And some more details, as we can see that, uh, so this all happened from the last year that, uh, so you can see that um, uh, Ericsson, Huawei, and many other companies, they all announced uh, some prototype system and some visions on using sensing for the future wireless networks. And uh, in the, uh, I think in the September of this year, so IMT 2030, which is the uh, official standard, 6G standardization promotion group, um, they have officially released uh, the research report on integrated sensing and communication. Okay. So these are some of the uh, uh, industry activities and you can see this is a timeline on the uh, uh, industry activities. And for the uh, standardization, so as we can see, there are lots of standardization activities ongoing at uh, major organizations like ITU, like IEEE, like NextG Alliance, this is from the uh, US, and the 3GPP, of course, and HexaX from the EU, and IMT 2030 in China. So uh, they all, um, propose lots of uh, proposals on the uh, sensing and, and of course ISAC. So they have this uh, new, uh, for example, in 3GPP, which is uh, 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 most, mostly, mostly concerned standardization organization, they have this new uh, SID on ISAC and cooperative communication and sensing and uh, 3GPP based wireless sensing services. And of course in NRV2X, and uh, there's another ongoing uh, uh, sensing standards, which, were, which is 11BF WLAN sensing and is led by uh, Dr. Tony Xiaohan from Huawei. So Tony is now the uh, uh, chair of the uh, 11BF task group. Okay, so these are some of the uh, standardization activities. And it is also worth mentioning that, so during the last few months, we have signed a formal MOU with the uh, HVSPS SPS ISAC Technical Working Group. And uh, this is a, uh, this is a re remarkable intersociality collaboration. And of course, we have many other collaborations like we have uh, co-sponsored OWSP seminars. We have uh, this joint HVE COMSOC and SPS 
uh, webinar series. Okay, so these are the uh, MOU, and we are going to jointly organize uh, lots of uh, events like uh, newsletter, like uh, the special issues, workshops, and uh, summer winter schools. Okay. Okay, and uh, so enough for the uh, summary. Now we can. Uh, now I, I would like to uh, mention a few things about uh, our plan for the next year. So the first uh, major event is that uh, we are going to have a spring edited book. So we are we are currently organize this uh, uh, edited book proposal, and uh, this book will be led by uh, Yonina, Christos, and me. So uh, the editors and the proposal has already been approved by Springer uh, Price. So this will be uh, with the title Integrated Sensing and Communications. And we will start from the background and fundamentals and uh, including different fundamental theories from different perspectives, from communication, from radar, from localization and uh, uh, asymptotic analysis. So this is the first part. And second part, physically a signal processing and the networking, the third part, and the fourth part is application and hardware implementations, and finally some summary and prospects. So this will be the first uh, comprehensive uh, book on ISAC. So this can be uh, so. Uh, so we will we will start to invite our members in ISAC ETI to uh, write these chapters together. And we aim to publish this uh, book maybe in uh, 2023. Okay, so several special issues planned. Uh, as I said, we have submitted a proposal to HP Wireless Communication Magazine. And there's another special issue uh, submitted by uh, uh, our members. So on OTFS, orthogonal uh, uh, time frequency space modulation. And this is also very relevant to ISAC because uh, now the delayed Doppler signal processing uh, has become a very uh, interesting and a very um, important uh, signal processing tool in both communication and reader. Okay, and elsewhere signal processing this is in in, prep, in preparation and Eurosip, uh, JSP, and actually IOTJ. So these are some planned special issues. And we're also considering, maybe we can uh, consider to apply for uh, actually JSEC ISAC series. And this is to uh, towards a dedicated ISAC journal or transaction. So now there's a very successful ongoing JSEC series, which is machine learning for communications. So um, this kind of series is a bit like, a, you know, a initial version of a journal. So they will have an editorial board, they will have a EIC, they will have error editors and associate editors. And uh, so they will soon become uh, actually Comstock journals, I think uh, maybe in the next year, given the uh, uh, tremendous attention is paid on machine learning for communications. And that is also our aim, but uh, we we'll still uh, need some time for uh, achieving that aim. Okay. And other plans. So this is the second uh, actually JSNS hybrid symposium. So joint communication and sensing hybrid symposium, which is again led by Professor Gerhard Fetters from TU Dresden and uh, uh, Professor Thomas from uh, University of Innsbruck. And uh, so uh, Professor Andrew Bordux from AMAC and me are TPC co chairs and uh, uh, lots of other uh, researchers in the organization committee. So, so now we have received the, uh, so the submission deadline has already passed, which is uh, last month. And uh, we have received uh, 40 paper submissions. And uh, now most of them are from the Europe region. So region eight, 24 of them are from the Europe and six of them from the US. 10 of them from the Asia Pacific. And again, the submitted papers co-authored by our members are almost half of the uh, of all numbers. So 18 of the papers are co-authored by our ISAC ETI members. And uh, this is the actually comes of ISAC webinar series of the second season. 
And these are six confirmed speakers, Professor Andrew Zhang, Professor Yiming Zhang, uh, Christus, Professor Wei Yu, Professor Visa, and uh, Dr. Oscar Ao. So, uh, uh, and th this, this time the ISAC webinar series will be co-sponsored by both the ISAC ETI and uh, ISPS ISAC TWG, okay, so technical working group. Uh, here are some initial stati statistics for the first two in one seminar, Andrew and Yimi. And uh, we have uh, nearly 300 peak audiences and 500 in total. And again, uh, 11,000, uh, sorry, uh, 17,000 people on live broadcasting. Okay, so that's a very remarkable numbers. And uh, uh, all the plans will continue, of course, organizing uh, workshops, special sessions, and tutorials and panels at uh, a COMSOC and SPS conferences, and AESS, the RIDA conferences, VTS conferences. And uh, we want to reach out to other communities, uh, like the information theory. So we would like to organize some events in ISIT and in the vehicle uh, people, so Intelligent Vehicle Symposium, Mobile Infocom, and uh, I have mentioned this uh, previously, we will uh, think about to organize a second workshop series uh, in conjunction with these conferences. And very importantly, we want to involve uh, people from MTT, so the International Micro, uh, Microwave Technology and uh, Techniques Society. So they have their flagship conference International Microwave Symposium. And uh, we were, were considered, so uh, in terms of the uh, uh, demos and data sites, we are now cooperating with Vivo, so uh, a, a smartphone company in China. So we're considering to uh, generate some 5G wireless sensing data sites. And of course, we can think about other data sites like human activity and vehicle network. And the summer school, so we can think about uh, organize summer school and a winter school in SPS and COMSOC. And in the COMSOC, we can organize summer school, winter school with Galucom and SEC. Okay, so now here is the final part. And uh, so here's a, a motion I would like to discuss because um, um, maybe some of you are aware of that. The HVA COMSOC is now uh, undergo uh, a uh, re reorganization or restructuring uh, process. Because now uh, within the COMSOC, there are lots of technical committees. And uh, I think there are uh, nearly 30 of them and uh, uh, seven ETIs. OK, so we are one of the ETIs. And many of these TCs and ETIs, they have a significant overlap. So uh, currently, the HV Council is discussing to reorganize the, this TC framework. And there will be, perhaps, uh, at the end of the next year, there will be a new TC structure where all the TCs and ETIs may be incorporated into this uh, brand new structure. And uh, of course, the uh, number of TCs and ETIs will be reduced to the minimum level to avoid uh, overlapping. So we actually have uh, two options within the uh, COMSOC. So we can upgrade to a TC at uh, ICC 2022, 20, uh, let's see. So this is not uh, an accurate time, but we can consider that. So, uh, I will, uh, so we'll continue discussing this and I will report to Wendy, the chair of the Emerging Technology uh, Committee of actually COMSOC. And, uh, but at the end of 2022, 20, uh, we'll be uh, incorporated into the new TC structure. Or we can remain as an ETI during the next year. And again, we need to be incorporated into the new TC structure at the end of uh, 2022. So that is to say, it is uh, not uh, very likely that uh, we will become a TC. Uh, at the end of the next year. So we can be, be, become a TC for a while, but uh, eventually we will be incorporated into a new structure. Well, we are, it is unlikely for us to be a TC, okay? So, or another op option, which is not to uh, stay in the COMSOC, but to upgrade to an 
H2O initiative, and this kind of initiatives are at an equivalent level with the H2O society. Um, so I think we have this kind of potential because uh, we have involved uh, lots of researchers from different societies. And uh, this topic, uh, integrated sensing and communication, is really an interdisciplinary topic that can involve uh, lots of people. So we have the potential to become an actual initiative. So here are some new uh, initiatives. So the actual initiatives are governed by the actual future directions. So they have uh, actually blockchain, actually digital reality, actually future networks. And this is, uh, 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 I guess, many of us are also involved in this actual initiative and actually quantum. And these are some uh, very big initiative. But this will require uh, significant efforts because we're no longer a TC or ETI within a society, but we become a, um, a greater organization the HPE initiative, which is at the equivalent level of an HPE society. So we can continue discussing this, we can think about this uh, in uh, at the uh, come, upcoming year. Okay. Okay, and uh, here are all my uh, reports, and now we can uh, discuss, or if you have any questions, we can discuss together. So, so Fan, I don't, I don't have a question, but I just want to say out loud what many of us wrote on the chat that I, I'm sitting here in total awe. So I think it's just unbelievable and amazing <laughs> everything you've shown here. I mean, just keeping up with the slides is almost impossible, and to think about the amount of work you know done behind every one of the things that you've shown. So I, I just wanted to say kudos and that this is totally remarkable and your impact has just been absolutely amazing. So I'm honored and proud to be part of it and just wanted to thank you for your leadership. Thank you very much, Yunina. So this would never have been possible without uh, the uh, significant efforts uh, from our colleagues. So yeah, we should, we should continue to organize all this and to make us a uh, community bigger and bigger, yeah. Okay, uh, Professor Kell. Yeah, hi. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to also uh, really uh, congratulate you for the great uh, job and uh, for leading this group. It's really amazing. Um, I, I don't know if this is the right uh, uh, venue for uh, pointing out one thing, but since you mentioned uh, the success of machine learning for communication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, as an author, as a, as a, a reviewer, I have uh, found some, you know, some sort of problems there. And, mm -hmm. and the problems are related to a sort of misconception that uh, a certain community has with respect to machine learning for which machine learning should be always validated on real data. And uh, this is fine when people do face recognition because there are the standardized libraries and uh, everybody use them. There are data sets that everybody use and the community, the machine learning community can compare their algorithms on data sets, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to communications, I think that as a community, we should uh, define our own standards and they actually are quite different because while it's very easy to find a library of uh, you know, uh, human faces or cats or dogs or whatever you like mm -hmm. to do your uh, even camera view for dri self-driving vehicles, now there are all these libraries for this type of applications is extremely difficult to find uh, extensive data rich enough for training and validation of particular problems uh, that uh, uh, you know, we may want to consider. I, I, I give an example. Let's say the example of positioning, okay? Yes, there are some people have published some very small uh, data that are like measured uh, things about the impulse response of this different point in a given room. And then you can uh, do your fingerprinting algorithm and compare with somebody else. That's so completely fine. But 
Suppose I want to do positioning for, for I don't know, outdoor, and I need, uh, you know, uh, I, I, these data are not available. Only operators can have them. It costs years and a lot of money to collect them. Operators don't publish this because they, they are whole problems in, in uh, ownership of data, privacy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what we do, we can do ray tracing, large scale ray tracing simulation. It takes a, a ton of money, a, a ton of CPU. Uh, you can generate all these things and you have a, a published, you can actually publish a data set, which is in any case is an emulation, a surrogate of reality, right? Now, there is always a reviewer that says, these things don't make sense because they're not validated on real data, right? You are mm -hmm. only showing that your network, your algorithm that is able to somehow learn an artificial reality. I say, that's fine. But what about all the other papers published in communication theory where we do MATLAB simulation of LDPC codes? We do not build decoders. We do MATLAB simulation of fading channels. We don't actually uh, you know, do equalization of VDM synchronization and all these things on real data. Why it is more accepted by the community that somebody published a paper on, say, positioning based on, uh, you know, angle of arrival, MIMO estimation, music, super resolution, based on a purely artificial simulated uh, 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 synthetic models, but then when, if I do the same thing on a, with a machine learning algorithm, the reviewers don't believe it anymore. That's a, a, a total double standard problem that we should settle as a community because this problem is becoming more and more and more uh, uh, important, especially because of the success of machine learning as a research topic. But it's, it's a cultural problem. We as a community have accepted MATLAB simulations, quadriga models, statistical models, ray tracing for a whole set of things, right? And actually we do things that are much more abstract, much more idealized. Stochastic yes. geometry, give me a break. Where you have base station distributed as a Poisson point process, nowhere. But we use it because it's nice, it's cool, it's mathematically elegant, etc. However, when it comes to machine learning, ah, we don't believe it anymore. <laughs> I think that this is a very big problem. We are, as a community, we are shooting in our feet. We are using the standards that the computer science community has, has used for machine learning applied to a certain set of problems where data are largely available, free of use and cheap to a problem, to a set of problems where data are scarcely available, very expensive to produce, even a, a, an extensive, say, ray tracing uh, uh, data set for, for example, uh, path loss uh, simulation in an outdoor environment of a few blocks of a city. You have to generate thousands and thousands of, the, of, the, of these radio maps. This costs like weeks of CPU. And then it would be nice to publish this and say that's a data set, is artificial, but anybody can access it can test uh, and compete uh, on the same data set for, for a given algorithm. And uh, as long as, the, I think, as long as things are, are repeatable, so data are, are, sets are published and uh, the training models are published and, and they are repeatable, I think that as a community, we should set very clear standards in the review of these kind of papers. Otherwise, we will never get out of this. And, and I think that we are really hurting ourselves. OK, yeah. Thanks for the uh, wonderful comments. Uh, I think that is, uh, so, so perhaps one reason that uh, our community accepts uh, this kind of MATLAB uh, simulation data, because uh, actually, it is very difficult for us to have those you know uh, this uh, radio data from the uh, uh, from the companies like Ericsson, like Huawei, like so they are not uh, so so within our community we do not have this uh, nature of open access. I think so that is uh, perhaps the very important reason that we rely on the uh, MATLAB simulation other than the uh, sim uh, other than the real data. 
But yes, I uh, agree that we should have these kind of standards that uh, are very clear standards that uh, which kind of uh, uh, data size, which kind of simulations or uh, real test experiments are acceptable within our community. And this yeah, is imagine, not uh, just, just as, a, as, a, as a sort of paradox. Imagine that if in coding theory, a reviewer would say, well, we don't believe you are 10 to the minus, uh, I don't know, five probability of error because you haven't built a decoder, you haven't done a VLSI chip that actually proved that this is going to be okay, right? <laughs> because mm -hmm. the noise is not exactly Gaussian and the interference is not exactly Gaussian. Okay, who cares? We have some sort of uh, rules that establish that when you have an algorithm, you can do a floating point simulation run on a, a, a AWGN channel or a binary symmetric channel, and we are happy with that. And we all assess yes. it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that, that is, uh, re, that is, yes, that is, um, that is an issue that uh, we, we need to look into, not, not only with the machine learning for communication, but also in, the, in our community, because now we are also thinking about to have some real data so we have this, uh, we want to have some cooperation with the smartphone company and uh, like a communication industry and to uh, acquire some real data. So that is also very important. But uh, in terms of the uh, paper, paper publication, I think uh, uh, both MATLAB and uh, uh, real data should have some clear clues, some clear standards uh, to, uh, to see that uh, they are acceptable, yeah. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi, Fan. Hi, everyone. A, a slightly different topic, if, if we're mm -hmm. done with this one. Uh, mm -hmm. So first of all, I, I want to join uh, the, the previous uh, people who spoke to congratulate you. I think this is impressive. I had an idea of it, but to see it all together is, is hugely impressive. And thanks very much for, for leading us. I have to say, you're, you're, yourself, you're very hands-on with, with all the activities. So it's not just the work group uh, leaders. Um, I, I just wanted to say uh, the one thing that kind of strikes me is, uh, you know, integrated sensing and communications. So radar is a big part of that. And I, I'm hoping that we can uh, a bit uh, better engage with the radar community in terms of events, <laughs> special issues in radar venues uh, and all that. So in, in my role, uh, for example, on the events, uh, I hope to to be able to do a bit more with uh, radar conferences in terms of tutorials, I don't know, workshops, special sessions. I think uh, there are a few people already doing these and I don't know how many of them we have in our ETI. I understand we're Comsoc ETI, but uh, let's try to reach out uh, to those people. Uh, as I said, a lot of us come from a comms, let's say background, but we do have quite a few here that uh, are also very engaged with the radar community. And I hope we can all work a, a bit closer to, to better engage with those uh, radar events, because I think we can learn a lot from, from uh, the radar community. They tend to be a bit more hardware oriented than us, and maybe that's something very interesting um, going forward. And uh, on, on this comment that you, or on this motion that you had at the end, mm -hmm. um, I also agree it's interdisciplinary, this topic, we have very strong numbers. I think you're, the numbers you've gathered prove that it, this is beyond an ETI. It's, it has to be something bigger. Uh, and I would also support, um, I don't know what exactly you mean requires significant efforts. We, we can talk about that, but I would also support to try for an IEEE initiative. And again, engaging not just with the signal processing society, but the radar, uh, computer science society can, can uh, you know, strengthen this a lot. Yes, uh, these yes. are the two points I wanted to make. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, Athena, please. Yes, hi, Fan. Congratulations again for your thank achievements you. and thank you for your leadership. Uh, I also agree that uh, you should try to get this as a IEEE level initiative. It's, mm -hmm. I think this is the ideal project for such initiative because it combines so many different societies. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, another very uh, important uh, uh, point is that as an HBE initiative, we can receive funding from HBE to uh, not uh, just, uh, you know, uh, so now we not to receive any funding from Comsoc, but become an initiative, we have an opportunity to have funding. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I also agree with uh, Christos that uh, we should engage with more uh, radar people. And uh, actually, we have some, uh, I also previously we have some uh, uh, connection with the uh, radar panel in AESS, so with uh, Professor Daniel Bliss. Um, but we do not have some, uh, we, we do not have actual collaboration with them. And I think now it is a, a very good opportunity to maybe to collaborate with them. So uh, maybe this uh, this activity we can. So uh, is Tanali here? Hi, Tanali. Are you here? Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Tanali. So I'm 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 thinking about uh, the uh, collaboration with uh, with Professor Police in the spectrum sh uh, sharing panel, right? So maybe we can start from there. Because last time I remember that uh, uh, we have some, we have talked, uh, so we have some communication with them, but uh, we do not have, uh, eventually we do not have actual collaborations. So maybe there's some opportunity there. Yeah, maybe it was just for them because everybody is busy. So we had a good com communication and good ideas how to proceed. So I, I, I can uh, refresh that and, and see what happens. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, the, so connected with the radar people will be a major task of our next year. Okay. So thanks, Tanneli. Uh, any other questions, proposals? Uh, well, this is Visa Kuevun, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, there are a few people here that are part uh, or members of the Light Fully Radar Systems Panel, including yeah. myself, uh, Vijay Kumar Mishra, and Dionin Eldar, and and I'm and Vijay Kumar, we also in this uh, Spectral Innovation Committee within the AES Society. Dan Police is uh, retired from, from that uh, activity oh, already. Okay. But uh, anyway, we are we are active there and we have also informed about the ComSoc activity there. And uh, so, so people are aware. And uh, But uh, I very much agree that uh, this a lot of things that uh, this community can learn from radars because radars are not as simple as people might think. So, so there's certainly room for collaboration and, and uh, kind of uh, learning from each other and, and uh, coming up with the better co-designs of these systems. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Visa. Very good comments. Yeah, so let's think about this and uh, we'll soon come up with um, uh, some uh, detailed plans to work with the RIDA people. Okay, so uh, any other suggestions, proposals? Okay, if not, I think uh, I'll, end, I'll end here. And uh, thanks again for attending the uh, our second meeting of ISAC oh, ETI. Hi. Uh, sorry? Uh, can I ask one quick question? You mentioned uh, this is Jan. Uh, uh, you mentioned that you're gonna uh, organize a book section. So is it open for contribution, or it is more like internally you've decided contributors? Uh, so we have uh, already determined the most of the contributors uh, for now. So, but we are we are still going to uh, invite them, maybe. And the, uh, so, so uh, Professor Professor Young. We, we, uh, I'm not uh, Professor. Can you, can, uh, can you please let me know which area are you working in? Sure, I'll send you an email and uh, I'll introduce myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe we can discuss this further. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any uh, further questions? Okay, so if, if there's no question, I'll end here and uh, thanks again for attending this meeting. And uh, so for those who do not uh, did not uh, register the uh, mailing list, please uh, visit our website and uh, subscribe to our mailing list. And our next meeting will be held uh, next year, ICC 2022, so which might be around uh, uh, May or June of next year. 
Okay, so uh, uh, I'll say goodbye to you, all of you guys and enjoy healthy and happy life. Okay, thank you again and bye bye. Thanks, man. <clears throat> bye bye. 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 Talk Thank to you, you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Fan, can you send us your slides? Yeah, of course. Thank you again.